Zoe and I'm here at the Fresh Festival with Stephen Garrett, Head of Kudos Productions. Hi Stephen. Hi. Now, um, some of you may not know, but you've actually got a law degree, so how did you end up in the world of film and TV? Um, well, the law degree actually came out of film, because I had always been interested in film and television, um, but when I was growing up, which was a bit before you, um, <laughs> there wasn't really a British film and television industry in this country. There were only three television channels and no film industry. So. Um, I saw a movie in which Charles Lawton, a uh, witness for the prosecution, played a rather articulate barrister and I thought, okay, well I can talk and this looks fun and so I thought I'd become a lawyer. And uh, then when studying law at university, I realized I didn't like lawyers very much <laughs> and thought that perhaps I should just give, uh, give it a go in the thing where my heart really was. So I applied to work on the news desk at Granada TV and that's where I started. Cool, so that's where you got your big break at Granada. Kind of, yes. And it was, a, it was an interesting time to be there because um, I was on the news desk of local news, a show called Granada Reports, when among others there was a man called Tony Wilson as a reporter there who was the creator and founder of Factory Records of Joy Division. So it was just a very inspiring time to be around. Well, you yourself have helped new talent get their foot in the door as well. So what advice would you give to young people who want to maybe end up where you are in a few years' time? I think be patient and persistent. Uh, I think if you really are passionate about doing whatever it is you want to do, just don't give up um, and do everything you can to make sure that you're really brilliantly equipped to do it. I get a lot of letters from people uh, applying for jobs who amazingly will still do Dear Sir or Madam, as if this is a completely standard letter to whoever. And I think you know, you just have to bear in mind that you are one of literally tens of thousands of media students who are leaving college in any given summer and you're all competing for the same jobs you've got to do something to stand out from the crowd so hang on in there and you'll get there um kudos is famous for lots of critically acclaimed dramas like life on mars hustle spooks things like that what advice would you give to those that want to break specifically into kind of drama script writing areas i think if you want to write i mean that i would say to be a writer is the hardest thing in the world. It's something I at one point wanted to do, but I realized very quickly when I met really good writers that I was a long way from ever being able to achieve that. And I think a lot of people think they can write and they can't. And <laughs> e there are even people who have agents who um, work with us or seek to work with us who can't actually deliver. So I think first of all, just hone your craft. I mean, it really is something that you get better at the more you do it. Um, you, no one's just going to sort of dash off a script and it be a masterpiece. And I think it's also something that comes with an accumulated wisdom of age. It's very hard for young people to write anything that's interesting because they haven't, you, they, haven't lived <laughs> enough. Um, and I think the older you get, the better you get. And I'm not saying that it's only when you're in your 50s or something, but um, I think it's probably fair to say that even great writers come into their prime later on. Um, so again, just do it and try and get things made. The great thing about now compared to when I was trying to get into the business is the technology is cheap and anyone can make stuff. Um, most of what gets made like that isn't any good, but it's a great place to, to, to practice. I would then say if you're serious about it is when you have a body of work, find an agent. It's yeah. really hard to get through the door and we're not alone in this. Most companies won't read stuff um, that, that doesn't come from an agent. So it's, that's a, it's a tricky aspiration to have, but if you can become a great writer, then you will be loved, adored, and paid a lot of money. Good, great advice. Um, so as well as um, dramas, Kudos also does lots of sex successful comedies, um, like Plus One that's just started on Channel 4, and then Moving Wallpapers coming back as well this year. Um, so there seems to be a lot of um, comedies coming back. Do you think it's a good time for British comedies at the moment? Uh, I think it is a good time for comedy. Um, I mean, the, what's interesting is for a long time there was the death the, of the conventional sitcom. The only one that was around was My Family. Yeah. Um, there's recently been a show called um, Outnumbered. I don't know if you've seen yeah. that, which again is in a very classic mould. Um, it's Again, I said that it's very hard to write good drama. Harder than writing good drama I think, is, I think, writing yeah. great comedy. And it's again, it's all about the writing. And... It's just something you've just got to hone. Um, I said in the session earlier that the first episodes of Spooks and Life on Mars went to 35 drafts. I think a lot of people feel that they write a script, they maybe correct it two or three times, and then it's ready to make. 
it absolutely isn't. It will never, never, never be ready to make unless you've really, really worked at it. The American system, which tends to produce um, a higher proportion of good work than we do, particularly in comedy, they have teams of people. Yeah. Um, in a sitcom, you may even get writers who will own different char characters, and they'll play it out almost in kind of real time. It's I can't stress too highly how difficult it is to make it work. But again, practicing is a brilliant way to begin. I think for a lot of great comedy writing comes out of stand-up, actually. So yeah. I would say to anyone who thinks they're a comedy writer, maybe to try stand-up, and that's a great way to test material, because if you perform to a sea of blank faces, there's a possibility that what you're writing isn't funny. Uh, you mentioned America there, and... Um it's a, this kind of a thing at the moment, like Life on Mars is getting remade for ABC and the, we're doing Law and Order UK over here. So do you think it's a good time for kind of a crossover from British, like British talent to get noticed in America? Yeah, I think it's a really interesting time. There, there's a, our non-scripted formats are very popular there. It's Strictly Come Dancing yeah. it appears there as Dancing with the Stars. It's huge. Um, obviously, the, you know, the sort of Simon Cowell, Simon Fuller formats in Britain's Got Talent. Yeah. And... Um, an American Idol, uh, astonishingly successful. Uh, it, there's been less success in the scripted world. Life on Mars is on ABC at the moment. It's got this stellar cast, people I, I would have kind of died to spend time with, and like Harvey Keitel and um, Gretchen Moll. Um, and it'll be interesting to see how it works, but it's, it's tough. I mean, it's exciting for us now to bring Law and Order over to the UK. That hasn't been done before with a drama series. And... Um, depending on when this piece appears, at the time of speaking anyway, it's starting in about two weeks. Um, and I think there's, there's scope for huge cross-fertilisation across the water. But the real challenge is to make a show out of the UK that works simultaneously in the yeah. UK and in the US. And that, for us, is the next challenge. What have you got coming up? We're developing a big sci-fi idea, which hopefully would, would straddle the Atlantic simultaneously, rather than we make one version here and then a different version in the yeah. States. I and mean, I think what's interesting is you look at shows like Heroes and um, and Lost, where you, organically you have groups of people from all over the world sharing the same stories. And I'm fascinated by the character who's become the most adored in, in uh, amongst the American public from Heroes, you know, the little Japanese guy mm -hmm. who doesn't even speak in English. And he's really been taken to the hearts of the American public. And that suggests to me that the time is right now to make shows that can speak to... Uh, a very global audience simultaneously. Great, well that sounds really exciting. Thanks a lot for your time. And Pleasure. Uh, thanks. Thank you. Thanks for watching and we'll see you later for more fresh interviews.